Hello there people. This is Christian. Welcome back to my computer and this image of a 3D print or two 3D prints that are similar but still different. These two are the same model. I have only changed one small number going from this type of curvature over to this without the need to fiddle with splines and stuff. And yeah, let's spill the secret. The secret is conic curve one of the sketch tool that I think is a bit underutilized. Let's try and use it in a design. So let's move over to Fusion and just a bit more discussion why I use conic curves. Let's turn on our curvature analysis. These three are the same model. I just changed the raw value for the conic curve and you can see it maintains a nice curve. This is happened to be ellipse and this is like a squished ellipse and this is more sharp corner. And you can see all that they maintain this nice curvature without me doing too much work. Because the problem with splines I'm dealing with, yes, this is a obviously a badly designed spline. You can see the curvature goes in and out and you can get problems with fillets, chamfers, other things in the design. So that's why I like to use conic curve for these like very simple shapes and they become parametric. Let's have a look at the first type of shape. In this case, I'm doing a draft. You can see these, these, these are isocurve analysis, shows you the curvature of faces, in what direction they go. And you can see these are always vertical, that's due to being a draft. And let's say I want to change things, I want sharper corners. See how far we can take this. So 0 0.9 we can do, or we can go the other way around, like this. And there's a small magic value, that is the square root of 2 minus 1, that's 0 point, or approximately 0 0.4. If you do 0 0.4, let's turn around, you might recognize the shape, that's an ellipse. And if you do a square base, of course, it's going to be a circle. So 0 0.4 is like a little sweet spot where we have ellipse. If we go lower, 0 0.3, we start to squish the ellipse, I like to call it, like we take the corners of a rectangle, there's a sketch below here, there's a rectangle. Uh, if we go below 0 0.4, you start squishing in the corners. If you go to a higher value, you pull the corner outwards. So this here is the extrude version with the draft angles, and we can also do a loft version. In this case, you can see the isocurves in this case are keeping the curvature all the way. Let's go back. You can see in this case, the curvature opens up close to the top due to the draft angle. In this case, I'm lofting between two sketches. And this is also parametric. We can change this to 0 0.6. We can change the ratio of the sides and give it more angle and stuff like that. And of course, if we pop the value to some extreme value, this can be between 0 and 1. It can't be 0, it can't be 1, it can be between 0 and 1. So if I do 0 0.95, I think it fails. Yep, it gives me a warning because the curve so it gets too narrow and the fillet in this case fails. So let's go back. So let's have a look at this design. I have a saved file here. You can do it in a couple of ways, So, but we're going to start. I like to start with a sketch from the top. We're going to start with the rectangle, move over to the sketch palette, change it to a center rectangle. You really don't need to sketch the full. I just like to do this because it makes it easier to think about the dimensions. This is going to be construction lines. Select the origin point, drag it outwards. Let's do it 35 by 50. Sorry, 50. Like that. And we have a little rectangle. Let's do some lines. L on the keyboard, turn off construction. I'm going to do one corner of the design and then use mirror of the bodies later to make the whole thing. So I'm making one corner here. And now our magic tool, the conic curve. Select this point here and this point here and just click somewhere in between. And here we have the magic magical curve value. Just keep it 0 0.75 for now and hit enter. Now let's do tangent constraint between corner curve and this rectangle side, corner curve and this rectangle side. So by doing this, I have made one corner of the design, or one quarter of the design to be correct. It's gonna finish sketch, E for extrude. Let's do it 35 millimeters, like that. Boring gray, shift N to get some component, component cycling colors going. So 
I have made this section here. I have this first one I'm going to use with draft, but I need to get the full body. So we can use create and we have mirror down here or you can hit S key and start typing mirror. If you have set up your design shortcuts, you can have mirror here. Mirror of body. Yes, please. This body, what mirror plane, simply select the face of a body. Fusion will understand you want to join these. This is a bit newer function. Hit OK. I want to repeat the same feature. So I'm going to hold down my right mouse button and drag up to repeat mirror. This is like a shortcut for the right key, right mouse button. Click the body, click the mirror plane, select the face, hit OK. And we have like this basic shape. So just to show you where you can find us find this there is like a little hidden thing that uses this which you are looking at right now this thing sorry turn on we call it component cycling this here is based on the corner curve you can do with splines yes but you can simply do this with the corner curve it happens to be the fact of 0 0.75 so you don't need to think that much and we set up a rectangle so the youtube button icon shape can be done with a corner curve let's go back to our design that's just such a simple side note so i want to draft the side outwards i can do s on the keyboard start typing draft find my draft feature or you find it under modify select pull direction that's going to be our base or bottom of our design faces all the faces around and all the give this gives me an angle here is the important thing when you draft things with a curvature, if you draft it outwards, the curvature expands. That means we can do it inwards, but there will be, you can see the corner gets more and more narrow and it will fail. So that's why I sketch the base, extrude up and then add an angle. Let's do 25 degrees like that. On boring colors, let's give you some color, shift down. Uh, let's do a shell. I do the S key to start typing shell. I rarely use the menus up here. It's much faster using the S key. Shell, top face. Let's give it one millimeter. And when I print things like this, I'm not shell it to one millimeter. This means the base is one millimeter. I think that is a bit too thin. So I'm going to type S and offset face. Select the face, add one extra millimeter. F for fillet, give this, let's hide the sketch a bit easier to see, give this little edge in here like a 2mm fillet. And for easier printing, avoiding uh, elephant foot and stuff, let's do from the menu, let's find our little chamfer tool, select and do 0 0.5, gives us a small edge at the bottom. So this is the base of the sign. If you want to change things, let's open up our change parameter and Previous I made a user parameter this, but we can move down and find it in our sketch. Here's the raw value. So let's say I want to push the corner to sharper edges, 0 0.85. I can do that. I can maybe make it more soft like that. They both work. And of course we can change uh, the sides and stuff like that. And so that is the extruded and drafted version. Let's have a look at the other version, the loft version. So I don't want to redo all the stuff I made. So we're gonna move back in time. We're gonna take our timestamp here, move back after the extrude, because I do not want to make the extrude. I want to make a loft. So I'm gonna click on this and hit the delete on the keyboard and Fusion will call me, oh no, this is gonna crash your model. Yes, I know, delete. And you can see other things disappeared automatically or magically. So let's open up a sketch. Now I want to add some user parameters. I'm going to repeat this sketch on a second layer and I want the size to expand with the factor and I want to be able to change only. I need to sketch two corner curves and I'm going to reuse the same value. So let's go change parameter, add a user parameter, side ratio. No units, just start with 1.5. And we can do conic. Let's call it raw value or however. It's a big, big R like that. That looks better. No unit. Remember, 0 to 1. So let's start with 0 0.6. Let's find our design. It would happen to be 0 0.6. That's good luck. Uh, let's go down here. This is my corner curve. If you can't see it, you can move around corner curve raw value. I'm going to put in my parameter here, conic raw, like that. Hit OK. 
I'm going to make an offset plane. Select, so we get to where plane here. Let's do it 35 millimeters away. And we're going to create a new sketch. Can open up our browser to see things. We can select the plane up here. I'm going to make a rectangle, center rectangle, construction once again, like that. I'm going to add some dimensions. Now I don't remember what dimension I previously. I'm going to type in some numbers for now. Let's do it 100 for the fun of it, so it's really bad. And I'm going to do some lines like previous from here up to the center, from here up to the center. We're going to add our conic curve. Conic curve from here to this corner, drag it out somewhere. And we all remember we made our parameter, so that's a conic raw. We're going to do tangent between this side and here, this side and here. Going to finish sketch. Now we want to connect these edges to these edges down here with a value. So they adapt, and that is our side ratio. So I'm going to move down here. Let's see the larger value. Sometimes this depends on how you make the rectangle, which order they get. So the larger value is D1. So this is going to be D1 multiplied by our side, side ratio. And this here is going to be a smaller value, D2 multiplied by my side ratio. You can, of course, do this any way you want to do it. This is just how I do it. S on the keyboard, we're going to do a loft solid loft from this profile to this profile hit ok and now we're going to do some mirrors if we look at timeline it saved the mirrors it crashed for us because i destroyed the body so i can move one step up it gives me a red arrow double click it it's missing object that object and that face gonna move up one more step double click missing object that body that face and i'm gonna hit ok and now there's nothing more in my timeline so because it removed the rest when I broke the model. So I'm going to hit S of Aikido, find our shell feature, top, give it one millimeter wall, S of a keyboard, once again, I like to offset the face of the base. Going to add one millimeter to that. I'm going to make a fillet. Let's hide our sketches. Going to make a fillet here of two millimeters. S of a keyboard, let's find chamfer. Avoid elephant foot at the base, 0.5. And like that, we have made another version. And now we can go back to our parameters. We can change with 0 0.5. Yes, we can push it together. Or 0 0.9. Can we push it that far? Yes. Very close to basically a square size. And maybe one, I just want to do some really low angles on it. So, this is how one possibility to use conic curves in design. If you see, this is really also good. Conic curve can be good for revolved shapes. If you want to do like nice curvature, you need to connect two corners. But remember the magic value for the raw value is square root of two minus one, approximately 0 0.4. If you do 0 0.4, you're very close to the ellipse. If you go below that, you squish the long sides of the ellipse. And if you go higher, you drag out the corners of the shape. I hope you learned something with this. With that said, take care, see you around, and goodbye.